In a day of many voices, unlimited opinion, and countless division, God desires to restore you back to truth. But what is truth? How is it known? Men long ago dedicated their very lives to bring you the great liberty of knowing the truth, the truth that makes men free. For the process was no wordcraft, nor contrivance of human devices, but the translation of the divine scripture, spoken by the Holy Ghost, was of the Holy Ghost accomplished. As to the ignorant and simple, they have been led astray by evil thoughts concerning the right faith established in all truth. Ignorance of scripture is ignorance of Christ. I believe that, in the end, truth will conquer. Peace, if possible, truth at all costs. If God spare my life, ere as many years, I will cause a boy who drives a plow to know more scripture than the Pope. As darkness increases and men cloak the truth with deception, there is a truth that has the power to penetrate even the hardest heart and lead us to a place of safety. It speaks louder than government, remains stronger than denomination, and is exalted to a higher position than even God's name. Join us over the next few minutes as Scott C. Lovett restores the truth of Jesus Christ to its rightful position in your life as the final word. Welcome to the Final Word Broadcast. I'm so excited to spend these moments with you delivering the message from Jesus Christ, the good gospel of God. That's what we're here talking about today. If you've been watching over the last few weeks, we went over the Word of God. We learned about it, but over the next few uh, weeks, we are also now going to begin to go through the process, a process about salvation. We're going to go through the great work of salvation. We're going to understand all of the ways that it is in the Word Word, how what God is saving us from and what he's bringing us to. I'm telling you, it's a relationship with Jesus Christ. And you know, a lot of people out there, they are not really living for Jesus. They're not really having that inward touch of God like they should. I know you go to church with a bunch of people that sit there through a service, but that does not mean that they have Jesus on the inside of their heart. You will know them by their fruit. So at any time during this broadcast, I want you to know that you can dial one 888 242-5229. That's 1-888-242-5229. The Lord is going to begin to go inside your spirit as we begin to talk about salvation. Many of you watching now, you go to church, but you do not have an intimate relationship with God. What is an intimate relationship with God? A heartfelt relationship where you feel like talking to Jesus every day and Jesus talks to you. It is every single moment. It is walking with him through life. It is experiencing the power and the glory of God. So as we begin to go through this teaching on salvation, I want you to really look inside. I want you to meet me for every show. And I want you to call that number, 1-888-242-5229. Call in. There are ministers waiting that are going to pray with you because maybe you feel like that you haven't had a real contact with God. You know, there is a big difference in our lives and in our day. Over, over people that have just went to the altar or people that are having an actual uh, experience with God. A long time ago, our country had something called the Great Awakening. The Great Awakening, where people tarried at the altar until they got Jesus in their heart. Jesus wasn't just something we did. Jesus was a relationship. So I want to go to this today, this study of a relationship with Christ, and you're going to learn more from the Word of God. So let's go together today talking about salvation. Well, the study of salvation is called soteriology. Soteriology is the study of salvation. It's made up of two words, two Greek terms, namely uh, solos, which means savior, or deliverer, and logos, which means word. We find deliverance through the word of God. We find out how Jesus died on the cross in the word of God. That's why when preachers don't preach the word of God, people's lives can't be changed. We're in a day and a time where everybody says they're Christian, but they're not acting like Christ, not living for Christ. God wants to deliver you from your sin nature. He wants to deliver you from every way that's not like him. He wants to deliver you from all of those things in your life that don't look like him, act like him, or, you know, maybe you're not walking like him. He wants to deliver you and set you free. How does this happen, Brother Scott? Does it just happen with a sinner's prayer? You walk down and say a simple prayer, repeating after the minister, and the minister says, 
you're saved. You know, we're in a day and hour where we act like people are just poof, instantaneously changed. Listen, it's not just about that. It is about God getting inside your heart. The sinner's prayer cannot change you. What changes you is you desiring a relationship with Jesus Christ. Our relationship with Christ is kind of like marriage. You know, uh, it takes two people to be committed in a marriage. It's the same way with Christ. You've got to be committed with your relationship with God, and you've got to feel towards God. Now, your sin nature says, don't go to God, run from God. It says, run and hide from God because of the bad things you've done. But God is calling to you right now over this screen. He's calling you and saying, I want to be with you. He wants to come back to our country. He wants to come back to America. How's he going to do it? He's got to start with men and women receiving him on the inside, his character, his nature, his way of being. He wants it in the heart. So let's go here today. We're talking about soteriology. Soteriology is the study or the understanding of salvation. Now, I know a lot of you, you go to different churches and y'all been doctrinally taught Calvin's doctrine or the Armenian doctrine. I don't see Calvin's name in the scripture text. I don't see Armenian's name in the scripture text. I understand the two different things. But you know what? I'm not really concerned. What I'm concerned about is you having a relationship with Jesus. Some people say, well, they're chosen, but who cares about that? There are folks that said they were chosen that don't act chosen. There are folks right now that said, well, I received the Lord, but you're not acting like the Lord. You're not talking like the Lord. You're not loving the Lord. You're not walking with the Lord. You're cussing like a sailor. You're acting crazy. You're sleeping around. You have no conscience against what you're against that. Why do you not want to do that? Because you don't want to hurt your relationship with God. Listen, we do not practice sin as Christians. What we do is we're trying to overcome sin. We're trying to get so filled with Jesus that we walk like Jesus, talk like Jesus, live for Jesus. And you can't do that without a real relationship. You can't fake it, baby. You can't fake it. You can't fake uh, having a relationship with Jesus because what's in your heart is going to come out. It's going to come out. So when we start talking about salvation, we start talking, about well, how do you get saved? Does the preacher just declare you saved? You walk down the front and the pre preacher says, fill out this card. You're saved. You're saved. And a lot of preachers need to quit doing that. Because the fact is, is ministers, we do not know the hearts of those people. God knows the inside of every person's heart. And God is looking in the hearts. There are a lot of church folks that have wicked hearts. The Bible says the heart of man is deceitfully wicked above all things. Who can know it? Big question. Who can know it? God knows it. That's who. God knows it. He knows what's in your heart. And what should be in your heart is Jesus. Love for Jesus. Love for his word. Love for his principles. Love for all of his goodness. Even sometimes you don't, you don't live up to it. But you should love who Jesus is. You should love morality. You should love the gospel message. You should love what he did for you on the cross. So as we begin to go in this study, we're going to talk about this guy right here. Right here. See this guy right here? His name's Martin Luther. Martin Luther uh, was in a religious church, the Catholic church, Roman Catholic church. A few people that are Catholics out there, I'm not against Catholics. I'm not against that. I, I'm interested in you having Jesus in your heart. But there were a lot of men that wanted the Bible. They wanted the Bible. They wanted the Word of God. Not their traditions, not the practices, not, not a relationship with a saint, not a relationship with a man on earth, but wanted the relationship with God. This is where Martin Luther came from. Martin Luther came from the ideal that we don't reach God by, by substituting images. We don't reach God, listen to me, or salvation doesn't come from praying to an icon or or holding a lock of, 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 of one of the apostles' bones or hair or something like that. It doesn't come that way. You can do that all day and they can say you're forgiven of sin. But there's only one who had the power to forgive sin and his name is Jesus. Peter did not go to the cross for you. Listen, Peter did not go to the cross for you. The Pope did not go to the cross for you. I'm a minister. I did not go to the cross for you. But God took a body and God himself went to the cross for you. Why? Because he wanted a relationship with you. God wants a relationship with you. Listen, man, woman, child that's watching. God wants a relationship with you. He loves you. He's pursuing you. He didn't want you to have a relationship with a denomination. 
He didn't want you to have a relationship with the Methodist church, with the Baptist church. Your relationship is with God. He stepped out of heaven and took a body to have a relationship with you, a real relationship with you. And that relationship, it is powerful. And Martin Luther, he wanted to bring the Bible to the people. He wanted to bring that relationship to the people. Many men went before. They were called heretics because they wanted the word. And whether you know it or not, there can be wicked politics in every organization. How does that happen? Men get in power without Jesus in their heart. That's what's happening to our federal government. Men are in power without Jesus in their heart. Men are in power without Jesus in their heart. I'm going to go to one of these teachings uh, today, and, and uh, this is in the, in the teaching soteriology. But they had something called the five solos. The five solos is, is alone. It's, it's five onlys or five alones. Uh, you're saved how salvation comes. Alone. Alone. And the first one we're going to hit is by Scripture alone. Salvation comes by Scripture alone. Not Calvin's doctrine, not Arminius's doctrine, but by Scripture alone. It comes by Scripture alone. And that word Scripture, what is Scripture? Scripture is in the Hebrew, katha, katha, or grafe, grafe. It, it, that is the words for Scripture. And the definition is this, a written document with royal enactment and a divine authority. A written document with royal enactment and divine authority. True scripture is a document that came because Jesus is king and it comes from the divine. It is God breathed, God inspired. It is God pressed upon us. It is God. It is God's truth. Anything that's true comes from the Lord. John uh, 1, 1 through 1, 14. I'm going to talk about scripture being alone. We, we, we are saved by scripture alone. John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. I skip down to verse 14. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. When we talk about Jesus, Jesus is the Word. He is the Scripture. He lived all of it. That Word became flesh. That's why it's Scripture alone. If you want to know who Jesus is, you go to this text. If you want to know who Jesus is, you don't look at Scott. You look at your Bible. You, if you want to know who Jesus is, you, you go to the text. You study the Word. The Word is Jesus, and it's God-breathed. The Word is, is God-breathed. The Holy Spirit spoke through men, prophesied through men, and it is a holy text. Let's go to 2 Timothy 3, 14 through 17. They'll put that up there. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Uh, it's, it's, you want to be wise about salvation? You go to the Word. You go to the Word. You find out who God is at the Word. At the Word. You find Him. You find out who He is. It is through faith. You want salvation? You believe that Word. It's a restoration in the Word of God. A restoration in you coming back to God. Quit running from God. Why is this country running from God? We've got to stop running from God. You've run too far. Come back to God. Come back to God. Right now I'm speaking to somebody. Come back to God. Call that number, 1-888-242-5229. Get your life right. Get on that line with that minister. We want to see God change your life. Well, let's go to these clips and we'll be right back. We know it can be hard to leave God's presence once you get going. So after the show, go to Compel Christian Network by logging on to christiantv4.me. Compel Christian Network has all your favorite artists and preachers, including the final word, of course. Listen to anointed music, grow in the word, keep the spirit moving at christiantv4.me with Compel Christian Network. God speaks, you respond. I'm Apostle Scott Lovett, and I'm looking for 500 Holy Ghost filled members to join me here at Real Church at 315 South Sheridan Road. That doesn't mean that you have to have a background in church. Maybe this is the first time you've seen this broadcast. I want to invite you to join us to have an experience with God. 
God will change you from the inside out. Do you go to church to have an experience with God? Or do you go for the donuts? Hopefully not the donuts. Hopefully God gets a hold of you when you go to church. Tulsa, wake up. Join me at 315 South Sheridan Road at 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings and join the Real Church congregation and let's form a body that's going to shake this nation. Hallelujah, God's good. I want to get right back in this text. Now, we are hot on the trail of, of what the Bible says brings salvation. Obeying Scripture alone brings salvation. Do you understand that? You'll find out about salvation, what it is to be like Jesus in the Bible text. The second thing of the, of the five solos uh, that they found during the Reformation, the second one was this, that, that salvation comes by faith alone, by believing, by believing, faith alone. Faith is the power of God, God-given faith. Every man has been given a measure of faith. It's inside of our heart. It is to believe, to be restored back to God. Do you understand that Adam and Eve had faith when they walked in the garden with God, but they used their faith in the wrong direction? They placed their faith in the words of a serpent instead of in the words of God. See, this is where we are. And when that happened to them, it opened them up to the knowledge of good and evil. You, man, are messed up. You, woman, are messed up on the inside. You are all sorts of voices. You feel fear. You feel doubt. You feel unbelief. You feel pain on the inside. Ever since our, our, our ancestors, Adam and Eve, ate of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, we've got the knowledge of both on the inside of us. God wanted us to know only good. But then Satan made God evil. Some of y'all think God's mad and God God is up in heaven about to destroy you. He's not trying to destroy you. He's trying to stop sin, trying to destroy the works of the devil. He's trying to stop the devil from destroying us. We return to God. He gave us a path back, but we've got to place our faith in God's word. God still called out to Adam and Eve in the garden. He said, Adam, where are you? He never stopped talking, and God is talking to some of you now. Your conscience is speaking. He's speaking through it, saying, come back to me. You know you're not right. Dial that number, one 8 8 8 8 2 4 2 5 2 2 9 right now I don't care if you've been in church 30 years if you don't have that intimacy with God maybe you never had it maybe you were one of those people just filled out a card because your grandma told you to it's not going to work a relationship with Jesus is from the inside out let's go to this text real quick I could cover this all day long going to be covering it over the next few weeks Romans 1 16 through 18 Romans 1, 16 through 18. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. From faith to faith. You're going to believe one, one part of the scripture. You're going to believe another part of the scripture. You're going to go from faith to faith, from glory to glory. You work out this salvation with fear and trembling. You're going to grow in the things of God. You might not have mastered the whole book. I haven't mastered the whole book. But we've got to have faith in the words of God. We've got to place faith in God. God is the Holy Spirit. The only spirit that's holy. The only one that loves you and wants to set you free. So salvation comes by faith. It comes by faith, faith alone. So by scripture alone, by faith alone. And this next one we talk about is by grace alone. By grace alone. And some of you don't understand there are different meanings of the words grace. When Jesus stepped on this earth, he graced the whole planet. He graced the whole planet. He came here, God came to earth. He graced us with his presence. He graced us with the word that he spoke. He graced us with healing and, and victory. He graced us with the power and the authority of God. Can you imagine God choosing to take on the form of a man? That's grace, unmerited favor. There was no reason for him to want to come here. And in fact, after the way we treated him, man, why would he ever want to come back? But he does want to come back because he loves us. He loves us. He loves us. His grace, that grace is, is, is for those that, that don't believe on Jesus, there is no grace, only judgment. But for those that believe, 
You've been graced. He died for everyone's sins. Believe upon the Lord and watch him change your life. Are you happy he died for your sin? Then you need to build a relationship with him. You need to know him. You've got to come in contact with him. So it's by grace alone. And grace has other meanings, and you're going to learn about that in a few weeks. You're going to learn about the other meanings concerning grace. So we, it's by grace alone. The next one, well, we're going to go quickly here. Hallelujah. Let's see here what text I wanted to read. Hallelujah. Romans 4, 13 through 16. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or seed through, his, or seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void in the promise of none effect. Because the law worketh wrath, for where the law is there is no transgression. Therefore it's a faith that it might be by grace. By, through faith, by grace. Grace is the power of God that comes on you to start living like Jesus. He, 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 he's allowing you to operate in the blessing and the promise. He, he has graced you. He's giving you the opportunity to be like him, to grow like him. The next one, it comes through Jesus Christ alone. So we got salvation coming through scripture alone, comes through faith alone, comes through grace alone, comes through Jesus Christ alone. It doesn't come through the Pope. It doesn't come through, through a bunch of works. It does not. Gra uh, uh, salvation comes through Jesus Christ alone. He alone died for your sin. He alone wants to set you free. Do you have a relationship with him? Do you even know who he is? I don't want to hear about Jesus. You better want to hear about Jesus. He's the one that loved you past yourself. He loved you when no one else did. People turn on you, but Jesus does it. He loves you. He's trying to help you overcome every obstacle in your life. Hallelujah. So Jesus alone, Jesus alone. John 14, 6. I'm the way, the truth, and the light. No man comes unto the Father but by me. If you had known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth you know him and have seen him. What's he saying? Nobody's going to go to the Spirit. It was the Spirit of God in a body. He put that body on the cross Die. You're not going to come back in contact with God the Father without going through the blood of Jesus. You will not. I don't care. You can go through the blood of, 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 a, of, a, of a goat. You can try. It won't work. You've got to go through Jesus. You've got to go through Jesus by Jesus alone. And the last one, by giving glory to God alone. I'll have time for all of them. Listen, I want you to get this book. I, I printed this book. It's a, a Soterology, The Total Walk of Salvation. I want to get it in your hands. Call 1-888-242-5229. Uh, you can ask about the book there. You can also ask about the teaching. Soterology, um, there's seven different discs in this, seven different discs uh, that you can get. Call 1-888-242-5229. But right now, I'm even going to offer you one of these discs for free. I want you to go to the phone. Maybe you don't believe your loved ones say, get this disc. You want to go right now. If your children are acting like heathens, you need to go right I don't care if they went to the Baptist church, Methodist church. If you don't see Jesus in the heart, if you don't see love, oh, I'm talking to somebody right now, right now, do you know Jesus? Do you act like Jesus? Do you talk like Jesus? Are you full of the spirit of God? Are you obeying the father's will? Are you doing what you want? Oh man, are you doing what you want, ma'am? God is in this room right now with me. He's watching. He's in that room right there with you. He's watching us. He's wanting to set you free. He's wanting to set you free. Heavenly Father, right now, God, I pray for every person watching. God, I ask God they would have a true experience with you, that they would repent of their sins. Show them where they're not like you. You were perfect. You were holy. You did right by all people. Oh, God, I've stretched forth my hands. I release the anointing in that room. I ask God salvation would come to America. God, we got a lot of churchgoers, but very few people are following you. They know of you, but they don't have that inward relationship. They thought their grandma was crazy. They thought people were crazy to say they love Jesus. No, you're crazy for not loving Jesus. He loves you. He died for you. His blood poured out for you. He'll forgive you. But you got to want a relationship with him. you got to want the purity of his spirit to come in contact with your spirit. Repent of your sin. Talk to Jesus right now. Call 1-888-242-5229. Let the, the minister speak with you. Repent of your sin on the phone. Call right now to get the free CD. Behind me is Governor Huey Long, right here at the Louisiana State Capitol in Baton Rouge. He had a plan to redistribute wealth 
His motto was every man would be a king. The problem is, is that you can give people money. Money doesn't make you a king. Money doesn't give you wisdom. All these people think money makes you a king. You can take a homeless man, give him money, and he'll be homeless. It doesn't matter. Because king, kingship, and being a king has to do with wisdom and how you govern your life. You govern your life like the king of kings, and you can have a small amount of money and live well. It's time that we understand that in our society. And anybody who builds a business has to use God's principles to make the thing work. It won't work any other way. So this idea of wealth distribution has to stop. You'll hand your money over to a homeless man and you'll be homeless because that man doesn't know how to be a king over his life. Heavenly Father, I ask God that the King of Kings would come into the hearts of men, that we would live by principles. We would quit handing money to our kids and everybody who has no wisdom of how to manage it. God, lest we be destroyed. I ask God we would quit assuming that everybody has the same amount of wisdom. You need experience, you need to obey God, and God will grant you wisdom. King Solomon was granted wisdom after he learned to love God. Start there, friend, and God will change your life. I am. Do you know what Baton Rouge means? It means red pole. The French, when they came here, they found the chiefs and the Indians gathering around the red pole. It was known as the gathering place. Louisiana is known for its multiculturalness. It's known for the diversity of people and ethnicity in this state. I'm here to tell you we need to gather around the cross called Calvary. It's red. Everything these Indians understood was symbolized in that. The cross of Calvary is going to wash us clean by the blood of Jesus. Out of that red pole comes water or life or the Holy Spirit. You see it behind me. But I want you to understand that we've got to gather together. We've got to repent of our sins in this nation. It's time to come back to God. I don't trust any man that won't say he's sorry or anyone that won't repent of their sin. Every individual in this country has sin. What's wrong with our politicians and our leaders and even our church pastors? They act as if they have no sin. If you want to see this country come back together, we've got to go back to the cross. And we've got to expect the Holy Spirit to flow again as men repent and ask Jesus to heal their ways. Listen to me. I want you right now, right now, listen to me. I want you to go to the phone, 1-888-242-5229. We want to get the free CD to you. Grandma, if you're worried about your loved one, go to the phone. We'll send it to them. we got to get salvation back in the hearts of men. Join me next time. I'll see you next time. I love you. In this latest release by Scott C. Lovett, you will discover what it means to be saved and walk in relationship with Jesus Christ. The Soterology Package includes a book and six CDs. But if you call right now, we'll send you a copy of The Salvation Walk absolutely free. These powerful tools will answer any questions you may have about your salvation walk. So call the number at the bottom of your screen right now and order Soterology, The Total Walk of Salvation. Don't miss this opportunity. Call now. If you're not enjoying life, you're doing